Here is the dungeon lever finished and all I really did extra was added this piece here and I have gone ahead and I've unwrapped it and I will show you the thing. So I've got some materials on here. I've got the lever knob. I've got le lever uh, leather. This is um, some lever accessories that I've joined. That's also lever accessories. This is the lever insert and lever main, those things. And as I said, I have unwrapped this and you can see my seams. Some of it was um, very easy to do and some of it uh, took some trial and error. And what I always recommend is that if you're having some difficulty um, to go ahead and unwrap part of it, bring it into Substance Painter, see how it takes the texture because it really will depend on the unwrap and just go at it slowly, maybe do this piece. Unwrap it and see how it goes and then try that piece, etc., etc. So I've got this unwrapped and having different materials will allow me to use just that material for, you know, that part so I can get, you know, more stuff in that UV space or actually less stuff in the UV space and I'll get it slightly better textile density. I also do uh, some checking with uh, a UV checker material to see how how things look. I don't want to set this all that way, but I'll do some of it uh, just to get ideas and see how, how it's looking as well. And then continue to, uh, to unwrap. So let me set this back to the appropriate materials all right and some of it is very straightforward i usually try to straighten the uvs where i can and where i feel like it and it just depends what i got in there and i got the gem at the very top which i'm not going to do a really crazy job on i'm going to show you a really easy way to texture this and to, to make it look kind of cute this is not going to be the typical dirty grungy uh, desert uh, dungeon material anyhow but so we've got it all and then what I would do is select it and export it as an FBX. So once again, the UV uh, unwrapping stage is very important for Substance Designer, but sometimes you can get away with Cube Project, Smart UV Project, and otherwise just watch some UV videos and see how common um, objects, cylinders and squares and stuff are unwrapped. And if all fails, just experiment and test it. All right, if you're doing materials in Blender, you're just doing like noises and stuff like that, uh, uh, Musgrave and uh, all of those, it often won't matter at all how it's UV unwrapped. But if you're doing in Substance Painter, it, it really will. All right, anyways, let's move over to Substance Painter. So here we are. What I've done is I brought it in and I've baked it just to save us some time. And of course, the next thing to do is to have a look at the bake and see if everything looks okay. I have a little bit of space there, but yeah. Have a look at it in Substance Painter and make sure that it looks all right. Over here, you can see my texture set list. These are basically the materials that I created in Blender. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna start on the lever main and this is gonna be real simple, watch this. We're gonna search for baked, just like that. And we have these baked lights, baked lights material and bake light stylized. I'm gonna grab this bake lighting material, drag it in, let it go on to there. And then we come to the properties and we scroll down and I've got these sections right here, material and lighting. I open up material and I'm gonna go for sort of a reddish color there. And you can play around with the metallic and the roughness a little bit. You can play around with some of these, but the ones that, the one that I really want is this one, edges intensity. And as I pull that up, you can see this white line starting to form. You can smooth that a little bit and bring that down. So you can start to get that stylized look very simply with that. Now, what you need to look at is this section here on lighting. It doesn't really adversely affect the top except for this, this here. So watch this, as I move my light around, that line will get positioned differently and the light will hit it differently. 
and so I want to look at that set it up so that I don't see a, a line right in the middle of it and then I can come back up here and maybe decrease the roughness and there is that piece nicely done sort of stylized and what I'm going to do is I will take that and just copy that layer and let's come to something else let's let's work next on ex lever accessories delete that and paste that and you'll see that it goes on all of these I don't want those in red however and then we'll have this we're gonna deal with that in a bit all right so let's let's work on what I want for this I want to come back in the properties and I want to look at the material and I want to change this to sort of a gold kind of color like that and then I have some ground effects here so let me just up that decrease that and uh, we're gonna get this edges intensity I want that up so I get this sort of whitish yellow line there it looks very stylized so I'm gonna come into the lighting and down here the ground color I'm gonna switch that to a lighter color that's gonna affect my material and that's not bad I might get us a little bit of something in there so you can adjust here as well and you can adjust the position of the lights and to see how you know to get it to look its best all right let's try over here see what happens if I put on metallic there you may like that effect a little bit more just this is the question of whether or not it's going to blend in and drag that down so I get this kind of this effect I'm going to do something else on the bolts in a moment but we've got those two there and uh, let's go over to the insert and paste that in that that original red uh, I don't see a line so that's good but what I want to do is change that color and I want this to be like a dark almost black kind of color there and we could see if we like it with metallic or not it looks fine with it on okay still getting the white lines but let's let's see if we can just do a little bit more yeah maybe all the way up for that one okay looking good let's come over to the knob all right so we have that line but I like the color so let's see what we can do here all right I'm gonna change the ground color lighten it up until it sort of blends and I think that's gonna look all right I'm not really gonna get a white line around it like here that's okay um, that is good I'm gonna come back to the main and I may go for a bit more of that white line right that's good I'm gonna to come to the leather straps I want that there as well All right but here I will come in and look at the lighting the ground I want to get rid of that and uh, you could change the color if you prefer a different color for your leather I kind of have my uh, my mind set on this reddish color maybe a little bit less intensity on this okay now some of that is hard to tell actually because it's the wood underneath it um, just before I get to the wood let's do these uh, bolts here so let's come back to the main and I'm just going to duplicate this for the moment and come in here and change the, the color to a, a whitish color and on this one I think I'll put on metallic just want to have a look at it um, let's actually make this kind of whitish blue and let's let's work with that I'm gonna put a black mask on there come over my polygon fill and choose mesh zoom in here and I'm on the wrong layer all right so I'm gonna grab this I'm gonna cut this Oh, I could have used it on the main anyhow I really want to start with it on here 
and paste it there. All right, and start going around. You can see the reflection in there. And this is actually mirrored over from Blender, so it'll go over on the other side as well. We'll have a look and I'll show you that. So just these accent colors on the bolts. And over here on this piece, there's one there and there's one in behind. Let's click that. And then we come up here and we will get these guys here going around. That one, that one, that one. And that one. I think I've got everything I would want. So let's do that. Okay, it's gone on that one as well. So this is what we're getting. Oh, I was thinking maybe I would put it on that as well. I don't know. It's up to you if you want to do that or not. All right, so it's coming along pretty nicely. Uh, let's have a look at the wood. So what I'll do is I'll, I'm gonna just copy that one, come over to the wood, really doesn't matter, just start with any one you want. All right, so for this one, I'm going to go for a, um, a more brown kind of color. Take down the metallic, I'll increase the roughness on that and let's uh, uncheck that actually. Now I can adjust the color a little bit more. And again, because this is sort of a cartoony thing, it doesn't have to be uh, as realistic as, as it might be otherwise. Let's start with that. And then what I'm going to do is put a little bit of texture in there. So I'm gonna add a fill layer and I'm going to use color and height color is going to be dark I think I'm going to do it this way I'll drop the height down pretty pretty good I'll add a black mask and a fill and I'll open that up and on the grayscale I'm going to go to procedurals I'm going to scroll down and take something like this directional noise or one of these I mean I could try this one I'll just drop it in there and you can see the effect that it gets and it kind of looks like wood a little bit I suppose, or maybe that one and scale it at two. Maybe I like that one better. And come back here, and drop this down pretty far. Just a cartoon kind of a wood thing and then it can come back. And I'll just have a look at this color again and just try a few things. Yeah, I'll go with, I'll go with that. Looks a little bit like wood in a cartoony sense. All right, and let's come up to the gem and just paste whatever I had. And uh, it does kind of look good in that color, but I'm going to use a kind of a blue like that, just to have something different. And then from here, I can add just a little bit of alpha details to create a paint layer and I will use color and height we'll try color and height make it dark I'll drag this down quite a bit and come to my alphas i'm going to search for a rounded rectangle i'm not sure if this came with substance painter or if i created it and just brought it in as an alpha i'm going to snap down and this is the insert am i not even on the right uh, i created that again i'm going to cut that and put that on the lever insert that's where i want it paste it there and I'm going to just I'll just solo that and let's change a couple things here okay one like that I'm gonna up the spacing decrease the size orthographic and snapped and take this and click and hold down shift and control I just want a few of those there like that and I will bring that stuff back. Oh, I may have wanted one more. Let's uh, do that again. And just come down a little closer to the front. Um, not quite. 
one more time. Yeah, okay, I'm going to leave it like that. There we go. We have a little bit of something in there. All right, bring it back to perspective view. Tab, and I think that's it. Very simply textured, and it looks kind of nice. It's different. I'm not used to doing it this way. I'm used to the grunge, but... Anyways, that's what I wanted to show you. Okay, so a real quick way to get sort of stylized uh, materials in Substance Major. Cool. All right, we're going to start another series very soon. Thank you for watching this one, and take care.